Hi, welcome to the Mohua Show. My name is Mohua Chinappa and I am an author, entrepreneur and ex-housewife. This podcast is about everything from business to technology to arts to lifestyle but done and spoken imandari se. Hi, in today's episode we have with us Sonam Dubal, a visionary fashion designer who has been revolutionizing the Indian fashion scene for over 2 decades. Graduating from the National Institute of Fashion Technology in New Delhi, Sonam launched his signature line Sanskar in 1999 with a unique blend of traditional Indo-Asian style and a focus on sustainability. Sonam's collection tells stories of relevance and cultural significance drawing inspiration from his northeast upbringing. and buddhist influences in 2016 sanskar became the first indian label to show at the eco fashion week in vancouver where the collection earth cycle received international acclaim so let's just get down straight to the conversation sonam you are influenced with the northeast is there some truth in that yes absolutely in fact what happened was um, you know having been brought up uh, between sikkim studies in darjeeling and sort of had the northeast influence i was able to incorporate it into my work through the years but it all began from the beginning that i started actually collecting uh, textiles and wanted to um, sort of work with with my cultural background but also with an amalgam of reality of textiles and weaves and everything that's available at that point you know and uh, little by little i started with vintage textiles and in that time i didn't even know what i was doing and i sort of combined it with the idea of reincarnation i found eri silk at that point from assam and i worked with eri silk as a story of reincarnation reincorporating it into my shapes into silhouettes which were global which were local but had a global outlook and so i slowly started finding buyers all over the world and patrons like you who have supported and helped me through the years So you know what are the challenges do you think that the northeast designers face you know to reach the mainstream fashion world you know i was raised uh, my formative years in shillong and it's really the fashion capital you know i mean i wore you know boots when i was barely in class 5 and you know we had such a huge yeah. influence of fashion around us we also embraced the northeastern fabrics weaves all of that also and they were also beautiful and part of my upbringing but what is it that stops them from reaching the mainstream fashion world see i think i'll take it one step step backwards i think you know music fashion and food are very big elements that have come from the northeast today even uh, celebrated in the cities today you know but the important thing is that when you live there you have an automatic sort of synthesis with understanding western music at a very high level you know so being somebody who is creative and also with my background having grown up between the northeast as well as bombay and goa with my father's family i sort of started finding a unique voice and that enabled me to sort of bridge between two worlds which was actually a clash of civilizations per se uh going back to your question see the thing is that what happens is it it takes a while when i started my first collection in 2003 i showed a line which was indo asian it was silhouettes completely different from everybody else i thought i had the i was very happy with my line but for, unfortunately i didn't get the kind of response that i really wanted but what i got was i got international significance I showed my first line in Leclerc in Paris and then it went on to show in London and it took literally 10 years for other designers to come to for other stylists to come for many other people in the northeast who came of significance one of the first people who also supported me was Bandana Tiwari who was the Vogue editor at that point and she mentioned that my work has an academic sort of perseverance to indigenous textiles and that was really true so what happens is that i think it's about the strength your own strength of your background which enables designers to be able to take it forward into the next world you know so it takes a while and it that's finally what i mean to say when i finished it was 1990 by literally by 2000 or 2010 that finally the notice became something very significant in terms of fashion in terms of food and today it's it's the rage whether it's in bollywood films you see it all over coming in different ways so i mean there has been a rise and finally i think the movement is starting also the difference is quite a lot uh, more because i think that the textiles there are very specially woven they're very also niche they cannot be made into mainstream they have to be ex- 
uh, you know, they have to be taken into a much more sophisticated and a special area, which I have tried to do with my work and also shown paths to other designers to be able to take their work forward internationally or then globally and then come to India. Last time when we spoke, Sonam, you were talking about Airy Silk, right? Yes. Tell our listeners about Airy Silk, which is also called the Ahimsa Silk, right? If you can tell a little bit about the historical significance of Airy Silk and how you went about bringing this, what was the influence for you? See, I started with this element of the Airy Silk because Airy Silk has Buddhist connotations. You know, and uh, having grown up uh, with Buddhist cultural background, I studied the, the outfit of the monk, which is basically the shengtap, which is the skirt, the ole, which is the jacket, and the shawl, which is the ahimsa silk sen. So the, the sen per se is of the eri silk. I bumped into eri silk slowly by slowly through my research in old textiles, in my research of my silk route, and found this particular fabric has incredible you know, properties, like it's cool in the summer and warm in the winter. It's a textile that breathes. The other thing is because the the, the silkworms are not killed, it has a very special significance in terms of non-violence, you know. But what was interesting is I think the history of Eri Silk is very fascinating because it has come out from different parts of the Northeast, whether it's also woven in Assam, it's woven in Meghalaya, also bits of it in Arunachal, but it's also woven in Japan and in China. So the thing is, what is interesting is that uh, what I found is that uh, that this particular airy silk has a universal sort of uh, a universal cognizance. And, you know, when I sold my, first, my collection in 2005 with a beautiful store called Saya in Tokyo, the buyer actually came to me to say that they had some Japanese textile, which was very similar to the textile that I was using, which was airy silk. So airy silk became the foundation of my work and was the beginning of now has become a rage with textiles from the Northeast that's coming in and different weaves. There are textures worked into it. There are very modern sort of uh, amalgamations and assimilations which are happening with the same silk, which is taking it to much more international sort of forum. There is also ways in which it is also enabling sustainability where there are villages that are actually wor working with designers, creating artisanary work for international and global things. So what I'm trying to say is this Eri Silk is not just a textile. It is an entire story. It is a, literally a river between the Northeast states. So Sonam, you know, in these last 20 years of having had Sanskar and, you know, given birth to the entire passion and love that you have towards garments, towards art, towards uh, all things that's uh, beautiful. How do you think the brand has evolved? Do you think that India has less takers for uh, the Northeast, uh, you know, silhouettes? Do you think you would have probably been better off if you were out of the country? Or do you think you're, you know, you are happy to be at the pace that you are in in India? Uh, well, you know, there are two parts of the question. I think that what what is the important thing is that I think India is a big country and we are, you know, from diverse parts. And uh, the essential part, I think, is that when you take textiles or forms which are not uh, the same or generic, where everybody wears them, it takes a while for people to actually uh, understand the niche of the particular product. But what, is, what I have found personally is my clothes have many takers of very interesting people who are uh, writers, film stars. There are um, very important lecturers, researchers, lawyers, very interesting people who are sort of drawn to the kind of the clothing that I make or the, you know, the fashion that I make, which has this amalgamation of the North as well as traditional as well as modernity where the contemporary blends into what the world wants, you know. So what I'm trying to say here is that I think it, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is that I chose to be here because I wanted to. And I feel wonderful of the fact that in my own way, I have tried to lead to bring the Northeast region into, into the fashion field. I was one of the first designers to actually put it into fashion and create a very sophisticated feel to the entire collection and also about the region. And that enabled conversation, that enabled newer things to happen. And sometimes it takes a little while for people to understand the global significance of something so small. So what I'm trying to say here is that I don't know whether the textiles and the weaves are only for the market of India. I have always expounded that the Northeast is closer to the Southeast of Asia. And it creates a bridge to understand the cultural significance, the textiles, the storylines, the topography, the food and the language 
which is closer to the southeast and to understand in fact china which is a you know just next to us we have to appreciate and we must understand the strategic significance of where the northeast lies so where i stand today is a very important strategic element for for our understanding of worlds and countries that we ha- we have no clue about you know so i found interestingly because i thought of myself at a local level going global i started finding a lot of interest from all over the world and what was interesting is when i showed my collection the first time i showed with uh, you know i sold in paris and then i showed in london but in in time it went to japan it went to australia it went to africa so all these different sort of places shows the fact that you know there is a market for designers coming from the northeast and it is not just india alone what i'm trying to say is that the world is a much bigger place and i think there is place and you need to stand up you need to stand out for what you believe in you need to believe in your roots and i have always stood up for authenticity for understanding that you belong to whom you belong to and you have to understand diversity and acceptance of amalgamation of cultures because that is the only way forward into the future why the name sanskar uh, i'd really like our listeners to understand i mean i'm a huge fan of your sensibilities and well it was very funny because you know earlier i was thinking of a name and i have this wonderful friend called manoj brahmar and he's a visualizer with now economic times he's been with every paper and he's a wonderful graphic designer and a brilliant painter he came up with the word sanskar this was 1999 when there was nobody knew what you know i mean there weren't many elements so there weren't these big things of things called sanskar i call it sanskar by sonam dubal because it was about the values that i stood up for you know the things that was a mix that was sort of a bridge between worlds it was always about uh, you know the, the clash of civilizations which i had accepted as a part of my upbringing and my growth but also an element of understanding values as you see today and it is about about you know about actually following principles of sustainability of realizing that small is beautiful of realizing that uh, the elements of textiles need to be appreciated that sometimes in life you know i mean it's all about these different values that i had accepted through my life and it was a beautiful name that manoj came up with and we both decided on tell us a little bit more about the use of motifs symbols and the cultural studies in your design and how does it influence your research for each of your collection you know in the sense that it's very interesting moa because i have sort of delved into cultural significance of languages of totems and i had a beautiful collection once called uh, lost languages you know it was about languages in the northeast like in himalayan region which are slowly disappearing because of cultural afforestation so using the you know language of pali brahmi etc i use the script to be able to uh, you know use it as a block print on eri silk and slowly by slowly what is interesting that i started with this whole idea that uh, motifs and totems have to have significance when you put it on to clothes it can't just be anything because it looks pretty there has to be a story behind it coming from a design background i've been very careful of the observance of anything that i put on my clothes and so as a result of which uh, i also developed a map many years ago in 2006 and this map was very interesting because my friend fiona colfield took the map and then created love travel guides she was highly inspired by the fact that i used them in these incredibly beautiful eri silk capes you know but what i'm trying to say is that most of my motifs and different uh, elements that i use in the collection there are there are motifs like uh, the languages uh, there are deep storylines of the silk route that are impregnated into the collection so there are uh, prints like the lamp print there's language there are stripes which are contemporary but then again because they are block printed then there's ikat silk which i use a lot of it which is recycled and the ikat silk is more like japanese kimonos you know so it's blended into a very indian style but using japanese styling um the other the other motifs that we use we use a lot of vintage embroidery old embroideries which i researched so it's either 1930s or its languages or its stones but these embroideries are all infused with an idea of an evolving collection through the years and every year i sort of develop a line depending on what story that i want to tell at that point you know it's a sort of a language of design which in, it comes on its own so now would you like to say something for uh, you know designers who are from the northeast and they would really like to come and join the mainstream fashion world you know there's just very few people what is the advice that you'd like to give them see first of all the most important thing is to be authentic you know to believe in yourself 
to realize that the world is a much bigger place and everybody has a space in it and to have an actual language of design you know to develop and to also absorb everything that comes in your life as it comes and to embrace all happening embrace having grown up with a mixed cultural background it was very difficult because i lived in a clash of civilizations but i understood and appreciated today diversity uh, multiculturalism integration and the most important thing is that you know to believe in yourself the thing is that if you believe in your passion you will slowly find a language and if you find a language you will finally have a story to tell and that becomes your beginning that becomes your unique voice and i feel that each person who comes into the design field has to develop his own own uh, significance and it's not necessary that you become a designer but you could become a photographer you could become many things and that's the greatness of joining the field of art or design to me fashion is a vehicle of change it is a vehicle of understanding bigger things and i have kept it in the way it is as something that i have learned through, through time that it's a very important uh, you know aspect of growing and for every young person who comes into this field don't worry about you know that uh, you have to believe in yourself you have to have a passion and if you believe in that passion it'll all work out if you just believe in yourself the main thing is to be true to yourself that's i think the most important how amazing thank you so much sonam for being on today's podcast and i'm sure a lot of thank you moha this is really beautiful a lot of students from the fashion world who are in the northeast and have always been very apprehensive about coming and joining mainstream fashion world i'm sure they're going to take a lot of courage after listening to this podcast correct correct absolutely thank you so much Do you our dearest listeners you can find us on your favorite streaming services Spotify Amazon Music Apple Podcast and of course on all other major streaming services with loads of love we are the mohua show where we talk imandari se